What's going on, smart people? You know, I consider myself halfway decent at Python. I've had my internships where I've had to use a lot of computational stuff, so I think I know what I'm doing. And today I'm going to put that to the test. I'm taking a Python quiz, not a physics quiz, and this isn't a coding video. It's a coding quiz. We're changing things up. I'm going to leave a link in the description so that you can test your Python knowledge as well. But it's starting, it's starting us off at level zero because just like their lists, their quizzes start at zero. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. The first question is, in Python, what is one function to output the content to the console? Well, it's clearly not C out, right? It's definitely going to be print. I think that they're starting off easy. Well, I guess it is level zero, so it could just this could just be insanely easy and, and a terrible, uneventful video. Uh, which of the following statements is not true about Python? Python syntax is much like PHP. Python can be used for web development. Python can run on any type of platform. Python can be used to generate dynamic web pages. Well, I know the second one and the last one are true. Uh, I don't know what PHP is and can run on any platform. I don't know what they mean by platform. Is that like on any type of IDE or... Uh, I don't know what PHP is. That seems... So th th this one I'm sort of guessing in between PHP and platform. Um, but any type of platform sounds too specific. I'm going to say that that one's, that one's probably not true. Then again, I don't know what PHP is. What symbol can you use to comment out one line of code? That's the hashtag. Hashtag comment. Moving on. We're doing well so far. What can you put before and after a section to make all of the lines a comment? Uh, the, the, the triple, the triple uh, quotation thing. I actually found that out relatively recently. It gives you like the green... Uh, well, at least I think in Jupyter Notebook, it makes the commented out section all green. Actually, I'm getting it confused because that might have been in Spider. Jupyter might have been in red. I don't remember. But I know that that's the answer. Question five. How do you create a variable A? So this, this is a very basic, very basic quiz. Uh, how do you create a variable A that is equal to two? Well, you, you, you just... Well, this is what uh, was actually kind of confusing for me when I was first doing Python, is there's no variable declaration. You don't have to tell it that it's an integer. It'll find that out for you. Um, so you can just say A equals two. How would you cast the string variable A that is equal to two into the integer two? So I think in uh, in like C++ you would use like that whole static cast command, I'm pretty sure. But this you can just say A is an integer. Python's just so user friendly. That's why I love it so much. Um, how would you cast the int variable A that is equal to 2 to the string 2? Same thing but with a string. S-T-R-A. And that's where it's kind of like important to know the syntax if you have the right S-T-R or string. But, you know, it is what it is. Wow, we're burning through this. This is 25 questions. We're almost halfway done. Which of the following is not a valid assignment operator? Plus equals, that's going to take what you already have and then add one to it, and then that becomes the new. It assigns that to the variable. Minus equals, same thing for minus. Times equals, same things but multiplying. X equals is just variable declaration, sort of. Well, it's, it's defining a variable, so it's not that one. Okay, which of the following is a valid Python if statement? Uh, well, this is the only one that has a colon. That's uh, in, You know how in C++ you have to have a semicolon for everything? You don't have to do that in Python, but things like function definitions and loops, you got to remember your colon. Okay. What keyword would you use to add an alternative condition to an if statement? Else if, else if, or elif. I always thought it was, I know that it is elif. Um... But I never knew why it's not else if. That just seems like a like an easy thing to do as well. But it is elif. That's another one of those syntactical things for Python. Question eleven: Which of the following is a valid way to start a function in Python? Def some function, function some function, def some function. What's the difference between those two? Oh, there's no colon. That's how they get you. I literally just said you gotta have your colon. So right off the bat, we know it's not this one, and we know it's not this one. Also. Who doesn't know how to define a function? It's going to be uh, the first option. Which of the following is a valid loop? So this, I don't know, this is a pretty good level zero quiz. I think if you weren't too familiar with Python, this is a pretty good way of showing you at least how things are formatted, like what you need semicolons and stuff for. Um, but which of the following is valid? Uh, a valid for loop in Python. So this kind of looks like C++, except for it doesn't have the the data type. It's not saying like int a. Uh, this one doesn't have a semicolon. This one for a for a loop three. Nope. 
we got that one. That's definitely it. Okay, which of the following is a valid way to start a while loop in Python? Again, look for the semicolon. Now we know it's not that one, and we know it's not that one. While, and it wouldn't say loop in it, so it's just while a is less than 10, then do stuff. If you have a variable example, how do you check to see what type of variable you are working with? See, this is these are the kinds of things where it's just like, what's the name of that function again? Uh, but this is one I actually had to use recently, so I know that it's lowercase type. Because I remember trying to use uppercase and that didn't work. How can you, so, if, so say for example you don't know what A is and you write type, it'll let you know if it's like an integer or a string or whatever. If you replace all of the letters A in a string variable example with the letter B, again, this is one of the, I don't know that function. Um, my thing with Python is I feel really competent and capable when it comes to applying Python to solving math problems or physics problems, but when it comes to like string manipulation and formatting, I don't really have that knowledge, so things like this, I, I just don't know. Uh, I wonder if you could do that with members of a list, though. That would be kind of interesting. Uh, so, example, swap. Do we think it's swap, replace, or match? Well, it's probably not match. That just doesn't sound doesn't sound Pythonic. Uh, so it's either swap or replace, I think. Swap sounds like something Python would be. But what would it would it be? Oh, I guess that's the only one. So let's try... So is it replace? Wait, so... I want it replaced with the letter B. So if it's replace all of the letters A with B then you would probably put the thing that you're changing first and then changing it with something. So what has B last? That's replace. Do you, I don't know, replace doesn't sound like a function for Python. We'll try it though, that's the thing that I think makes the most sense. Even though I don't, I'm not too sure about this. Whatever, we'll go with it. It's not life or death here. Which of the following is a valid list in Python? The first one kind of looks like a dictionary except for it's got like keys without values. Second one is a tuple. A tuple is basically a list, but you can't change the members of the list. Or maybe you can if you get like super fancy. I don't know how to do it. Anytime I try to change members of a tuple, I get errors. That is, uh, that, that's interesting because that's, that's absolutely nothing. Um, sample list, this is the only thing that's an actual list. Cool. Moving on. Next uh, quiz question. <laughs> Which of the following is a valid tuple? Go figure. So that's going to be this one. We just talked about that. I don't know. I'm not sure if this it qualifies as a dictionary if you're not having like the colon with like... So normally you have the key and then the colon and then the value. Um, so I don't know if that even counts as a dictionary, but I guess I'm glad that's not the question. Which of the following is a valid Who didn't see that coming then? My example equals some term... Well, you need the colon, so it's missing a colon here. I think there's ways to uh, define dictionaries by using like pre-built functions where you don't need to use the colon, but this is actually just constructing a regular old dictionary, so it's going to be this one. Uh, I sh no, it's this one. What's interesting is um, I had to use dictionaries for creating, like I had a heat map I had to make for my research internship, and uh, Basically, I had all these sliders that I wanted to use where you could change the slider and update the map in front of your eyes. So what I did was I assigned all of those slider values. Um, I, I placed those as keys in the dictionary with the values being the, the heat map. So I created this huge dictionary basically full of heat maps that were associated to those sliders so that it took no time to run it all whenever you wanted to update because I'm not going to get into that, but that was pretty cool. Ended up not working because it used all of the memory that Python had to offer because I had like something bizarre like 6,000 uh, frames but you know it was a nice try. Uh, how would you print the second item in the list variable example? Well like we said at the beginning of the video Python lists start on zero so the second item would be one if that makes sense. Okay what would the statement print percent dot two f percent one two three four four print out um, well that looks so if it's it looks like honestly I don't know uh, 
based off of the context of the of like the answers, it looks like it's just rounding to two decimal points. But then the percent makes me think of like modulus. And I don't know I have no idea. Oh, F could be float. So maybe it is just rounding to two decimals, but then it looks like these are the exact same answer. Unless I'm being blind. Um Yeah, it's just I mean so assuming that they're rounding to two decimal points, I mean both of these are the exact same answer, but based I would think if you wrote it a second time, you would write it the second time because you didn't think you wrote it the first time, so I'm gonna pick this one. What is the keyword used after the try statement to handle exceptions? This is another one that I know strictly because actually I found this out very recently because um I, I was using this new plotting library called HollowView, and they have uh, this class that contains all of like the default frame rates and frames used and stuff for for plotting certain like animations. And uh, I wanted to change the default value, so I had to I had to um, access members of that class, and it was throwing like errors when I would do that. So I had to I had to use these kinds of um, exception handlers. So I know. So it's what is the keyword used after the try statement to handle exceptions? <clears throat> it's uh, it's accept. Yes. Yes. What is the proper way to open a file that you intend to read from? Well, I don't see any pickles. For those of you who don't know, there's a library called Pickle that I mean I think it's really common in uh, at least in physics because you can do like pickle dot dump. So you, what do you guys know about pickle dump? Nothing. Um, this isn't. I don't see no pickle dumps here, so that's interesting. But I guess that's maybe that's just for data. Who knows? But when you use the pickle dot dump, you still have like the open, and then would it be read or R? See, I think it's also a little bit different when you use pickle because I've seen it. I think it's like W B and R B, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what the B stands for whenever you use pickle, but uh, I know it's I know it's like a character, not a word. But I guess characters in Python are strings, anyways. I, I think this is where having a, a formal course in Python would have been really helpful. Um, but based off of how it's how it's written in pickle, I assume it would be really similar to how you would do it with I guess like the usual the functions that come with Python. So I'm going to use this one. Okay. What is the proper way to open a file that you plan to write to? Well, that's going to be W, just like how R was read. Read. Okay. Uh, I might be writing that too fast. No, I'm confident. We got this. If you had a statement like F equals open test dot text W, what would happen to the file as soon as the statement is executed? Well, Nothing unless the code following it writes to file. The file's contents will be erased. Nothing. Python will save the file's contents and append whatever the code following says to write. Uh, so, this one I'm actually not too sure of. Because, so this is my thought process for this. You're saying you're creating this variable f that is equal to writing, some, uh, writing to some file opening some file to write to rather but you're not calling it after right so you're not saying f equals this and then use it you're just creating the variable and not doing anything with it so I don't know if you'd have to have like f following that line like it would be f equals open blah, 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 next line f to where it actually opens the file I feel like that's what you would have to do um, in which case so I think it's nothing. I don't know. I'm not too confident with this one. What is the difference between a class and an object in a Python? There's no difference between a class. Yeah, there. Uh, isn't a class? Um, classes are weird. I know they're not the same thing, obviously, but I thought classes were the thing that. Uh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Objects are not, so objects are not able to be called. Objects are created from classes. Yes. Yes. And that's the last one. Oh my god, this went by real fast. We're gonna have to do level one at some point. I missed a couple. I scored 20 points out of 25. Where did I miss? I totally... <laughs> 
I'm an idiot sometimes. Here, let's, uh... Wow! I think I was just reading way too quickly. I think I was saying the right answers at times, and I just, like, clicked on the other things. This one I really didn't know the answer to, I'll admit that. So, Python, what did I pick? Python syntax. Oh, no, I didn't pick that one. I picked this one. Python can run on any type of platform. Okay, so apparently, whatever PHP is, Python is pretty similar to it. Uh, what else did I miss? This one I explicitly said, <laughs> I remember saying, it's STR, not string, and I think I clicked on it by accident. So, that happened. And then, uh, I saw one referencing the dictionary. Or no, I, how much did, how many times did I talk about a dictionary having the curly brackets? Well, I didn't explicitly say that, but I was highlighting it with the curly brackets. So, that, by the way, you need colon. And then I click on the only one that doesn't have, well, I guess there's this one too. But, uh, which one was the right answer? Oh, the one that had the colon and the, and the curly brackets. Yeah, I knew that. God. That was a freebie. That was a freebie. I knew that one. So which one would print the statement? Maybe, maybe I'm 123.44, 123.44. These are the exact same thing. I called shenanigans. I got that one. <laughs> so... Really? Alright, so I'm, I'm giving myself those points back as out of 25. I'm tacking on two more points because I was an idiot and clicked on the wrong thing a, a few times. Whatever, I'll take, I'll take the L. Uh, and I think I missed something else. If you had a statement like F equals open, so it wasn't nothing, it was the file's contents will be erased. That sounds about right because, like, it'll open the file that you've already made and then overwrite it, so that sounds right. I just didn't know. I thought you might have had to call that variable. Well, I guess you don't call it, but you know what I'm saying. So which ones did I really not know? So I missed five, but I, but not really. So I missed one, this one here. I definitely missed, I, I don't count that one. So, <laughs> so, so subtract one from my score. Uh, this one I definitely knew. This one is the same answer, so I definitely knew. Based off of an educated guess. I mean, I, I had an educated guess that it was this and the same thing. Uh, this one I didn't know. So I really missed two. So I'm saying that I got a 23 out of 25 because you guys were distracting me. You guys you guys let some tomfoolery go down and you, you did nothing. You stood, you stood idle, you buy. <laughs> Get it? Uh, but that was this quiz. This was actually kind of fun. I wonder if they have... Uh, like level ones or higher that I can do in the future. But this was fun. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description so that you can take this for yourself. Let me know in the comment section what you guys got, and I'll see you guys there.